What is going on, everyone? We are cruising right into week 10 of the college football season. Some big news coming down this week for the Auburn Tigers. We're going to break that down and also their matchup with Mississippi State in another episode of Head to Head. All right, we got Cole Kublik here hanging out, obviously former Auburn offensive lineman. He also is on Jocks, WJOX in the morning, 7 to 10 with Greg McElroy. You can catch them there. And I know you guys have talked about this a lot with the breaking news that came down this week that Brian Harson has been fired as the head football coach of the Auburn Tigers. Cadillac Williams will step in as the interim coach until they name a new coach. So lots to unpack here. Also, you get a new athletic director in John Cohen who comes from Mississippi State, and Auburn is going to Mississippi State to play this weekend. So all sorts of stuff happening right now. What do you make of all this at this at this juncture in the season as we head into Week 10? It's a lot. And uh, I believe that the original plan from Christopher Roberts, Auburn president, was to allow Coach Harson to finish the season. Um, I do think that most likely the plan was at least to look over it, evaluate it, but then that was going to lead to him being fired or terminated at the end of the regular season. I think when John Cohen became available, when they found out that he would probably take the Auburn athletic director job, they vetted it and put something together that he was a fan of, but said, I'm not coming in there and doing your dirty work. I'm not going to come in there. First thing I do is fire a coach. It's not my mess. Get rid of him. I'll sign the contract. I'll come be your AD. That's why you specifically saw the statement yesterday say that Chris Roberts was the one that fired Brian Harson, uh, not John Cohen. So then John Cohen, an hour later, ends up being announced as the Auburn Athletic Director. So a lot of change, a lot of things that are different, a lot of things that are happening. Um, I thought it would go through the end of the season. I felt like that was fair. Uh, I'm not a fan of firing a coach in the middle of the season. I've made that very public for a lot of different reasons. The main reason being 1998 I actually went through it uh, as an Auburn football player. I know what it does. I know how it can hamper your development. I know how it distracts you. It doesn't feel like you're really playing football, honestly, because there's so many people asking about what's next or what happened or want to talk to you about different details of different things. And very rarely is the emphasis on actually going out and playing the game. You practice less, you watch less film, you're coached less. So I think that prevents you from growing as a football player. And that's what I don't like about what these players are going to see for the next month, Lauren. Yeah, you make such a great point. And I'm going to dive into that as we get into the matchup. One more quick question just about all of this from you. Of course, everyone wants to know who's going to be the replacement. Who are they going to hire? Who's a potential candidate? Who's the best fit for this program? Just give us your opinion on that. Obviously, you know the lay of the land. You've been around it long enough. And uh, we, we keep hearing a lot of different names flying around. Um, but, you know, I, I'd love to get your take on that and, and, and who you feel might be a great fit for this program. I think of the names that are being thrown out there, your best case scenario is Lane Kiffin. Um, Lane Kiffin is going to be able to attract quarterbacks. He's going to be able to attract receivers. And that's going to mean that your offense is going to improve instantly. He's also going to bring a system that is going to allow certain skill players to thrive and be successful. He knows he's connected. He has a network where he's going to be able to put together a good staff. And I think he obviously knows the league and knows the division very well because he's coached in it at multiple spots. So um, for a guy that also understands today's college football, he understands how to utilize the portal. And I think he knows that he would be walking into a place that in one month from now is going to have better facilities. It's going to have a better NIL situation. It's going to have a better in-game experience and has a better tradition in its totality. So I think Lane Kiffin would probably look at that or could be sold on the fact that that's going to be a better situation for him. Does he want it? I don't know. Does he want to get out of Oxford? I don't know. Does he think Auburn's a better fit for him and his family? Not sure, but I do know that if all that's presented to him, along with probably a $6 million a year plus salary, it's going to be difficult to turn down. Well, I guess we'll have to sit back and grab our popcorn, right? I guess we'll see how things shake out. All right, let's get into the matchup real quick. Obviously, you, you alluded to it at the top, just about how, you know, just the deflation that you're going to feel as a team. Cadillac Williams, he's a known guy. I think he's someone that will rally the troops. Uh you know, um, as the interim coach, as they try to figure this out. But the bottom line is there's still the elephant in the room. There's still a lot to figure out, a lot of uncertainty. So what does this Auburn football team need to do really well against this Mississippi State team if they want to have a chance to compete, try to get in the win column, try to gain some of this confidence back and have a slightest shot at getting to a bowl game? Yeah, the first thing they have to do is get organized and get motivated because you mentioned it. There's been a change at the head coaching position, so a change from the top down 
the organization is going to be critical, and I think the motivation is going to be critical because you cannot go to Starkville, Mississippi against a team that's as aggressive as they are in different ways. One, throwing the football on offense. Two, attacking you on defense the way that they do. Not be ready to play and think you're going to have any chance to win. That's just not a real thing. Uh, the next thing would be tackling. And it sounds very fundamental. It sounds very baseline. But Mississippi State is going to get the ball to the backs so of the checkdowns quickly a lot. They run the ball more this year than they have in past years. And they're going to hit a lot of short intermediate passes. You've got to get the ball carriers to the ground. The teams who have success against that offense, they do two things. They tackle and they affect the pocket. I don't think it has to lead to necessarily sacks, but you have to affect the pocket. Force Will Rogers to think, force his eyes to move, force his arm angle to change, force him to get off platform. Those things have to take place if you're going to find a way to win this game. Obviously, offense has got to find a way to do something. I'll be interested to see with Will Friend and I kill your calling it, how different can it really look? I mean, you don't have a quarterback on that you can put a whole lot on. It's not like you can go in and reinvent a lot of this offense or add and subtract a ton of different things. You kind of are what you are right now, but there may be a few things that they can wrinkle up and try to make it a little bit different, at least change the presentation of it that could give Auburn some advantages to be able to find some things. This state defense we thought was going to be better against the run going into this year than they have been. Currently six in the SEC, about 138 yards a game on the ground. So Auburn did a nice job against Ole Miss, creating some angles, finding different ways to run the football. First half against Arkansas, same thing. We saw little John Samuel Shanker come over, take the direct snap, pitch it to Robbie Ashford. So there are some things that can be done. I'll go back to it. North and South run game with Robbie Ashford. I want to see him Mm -hmm. get North and South quickly with his legs because that's where I think he's most dangerous. We don't have an idea what it's going to look like because it's going to be new with different people in, in charge of it and different people calling it. But they're going to have to find a way to get something going on offense if they're going to find a way to hang or win this football game. And I think you nailed it right there. When you have so much change, everything just kind of like exploded this week. And again, we realize that this has kind of been the writing on the wall. Things have been coming. There's been a lot of turmoil. You've kind of been questioning how these players have felt. All the just all the talk, all the chatter, all the outside noise. And so in many ways, you know, I think there's the part of you. I don't know if there's a sense of relief, but it's almost like, OK, we just need to go out there and play us. What does that look like to your point? So many moving pieces here. The real question is, can Auburn overcome some of this and get enough points on the board to be able to beat Mississippi State? A lot um of uncertainty. And I think this is a football team that I I hope that Auburn can come out and play inspired football can come out and try to eliminate some of that noise and the distraction that they've had to endure. Um, I think Carnell Williams is obviously a, a great guy that can fit that role for rallying the troops as much as you possibly can in this situation. But I just don't think there is any way to look at this in a positive way in which this, this team is really just, uh, having to um, walk through some very tumultuous times and what this looks like for their future, I think is certainly um, concerning. So uh, I think it's going to be tough for them to get this one, especially on the road against Mississippi State. So I got you at 2710. Brought to you by Alabama Beef Farmers and Ranchers. 